It's time for Oklahoma Sports Scene from the Bricktown Brewery Restaurant, a raucous Bricktown Brewery Restaurant Boy. in Tulsa, Oklahoma, on South Peoria. Hello again, everyone. I'm Chris Lincoln, along with Coach Gil Crowder. Yeah, quite a crowd here tonight, Gil. I'll tell you, well, you know, it's uh, it's a holiday. That's right. And so everybody, uh, I guess, decided to come to 33rd and Peoria <laughs> uh, to Bricktown because we're here. Uh, that's probably why. Must be. And yeah. a great lineup. Let's go through our lineup here for tonight's Oklahoma sports scene. Going to start with Emmett Hahn and wrap up the 34 Chili Bowl. We'll also have Tracy Milford on. She's going to represent Major League Fishing. Talk about this incredible growth of Major League Fishing throughout Network TV. Then follow that up with the outstanding uh, bass champion, Edwin Evers from our own Talala, Oklahoma. You won't believe this fisherman, the money he's made. Ryan Fulmer, the head baseball coach at Old Roberts University, will join us. Talk about the Golden Eagles 2020 season prospects and also preview their diamond dinner coming up January 31st. And finally, your old buddy, Mick Wilson, right? Mick Wilson will be talking about the BOK Showcase. February 1st at the BOK Center, starting at 9 o'clock, we got eight games there 16 teams it will be another opportunity for that basketball junkie to spend the day now to <laughs> be okay right. what a great opportunity for the kids to experience that atmosphere the, it's an nba style obviously uh sure. facility and and it's a memory that they'll always have i think uh, playing in the be okay playing the tournament champions playing the state tournament those three are rival yeah. for one another because when they walk when you walk into the be okay it's huge, yeah, yeah. so much, it, it's even bigger, you know, than the Maybe Center. Sure. And anywhere they're gonna play in their career yeah. through college, to college. Yeah, unbelievable. That, look forward to that event, that's February 1st. And again, Mick will be here to tell us all about the teams. 16 teams, eight boys, eight girls from the area here. Well, let's talk some pro football, some NFL conference champions. They've crowned their champions now. Now we know who's playing in Super Bowl 54, the first Sunday in February, down in Miami. I tell you, uh, both of the winning teams look very formidable. Yeah. It's going to be quite, I think the two best teams made it through the league playoffs. Uh, I was really, really impressed with uh, Mahomes yesterday. Yeah. I thought, uh, uh, Chris, he played about as well as a quarterback can play, both throwing and running. Running is unbelievable. Unbelievable. Yeah. And, and, but then, you know, uh, Garoppolo manages the game well, and they turn it over to their running back, and he owns the, the game. Yeah, what did the 49er quarterback throw, what, nine times maybe in the game? Or 67 like that? yards. Wow. But that running back had 222 yards rushing. But for our area, and four certain, touchdowns. I already said the feature was on the game at Arrowhead. Tennessee yep. playing at Kansas City. Everybody knew it was at stake. I mean, the Kansas City Chiefs, it's unbelievable, Coach, had not been to a Super Bowl in half a century. 50 years. 50 years, you bet. 800 games between Super Bowl IV when they beat the Minnesota Vikings. And I think all of us in our generation remember those chief teams. What what great, I mean, my God. Thanks, Graham. Lenny Dawson. You know, and Lenny Otis Dawson. Taylor, yeah. That was uh, when I was coaching at Kansas State. Uh, before our two-a-days would start and when their two-a-days in Kansas City had started, right. we would go over and spend three days oh, wow. with the Kansas City Chiefs. And yeah. I tell you, I've never seen a person who was more articulate and who was more organized than Hank Strom. Or as well-dressed. Uh, and well-dressed. <laughs> uh, but, but, I mean, he, everything was by the numbers. There was yeah. no question about And it was, it was, for me, as a young coach, I was only 26 years old at the time, as a young coach, to see that organization really helped me in my career because he was right by the book. And they always quote Hank Stram, of course, so let's matriculate up the field, boys. Matriculate right? up the field, boys, you <laughs> bet. And he, he, uh, he, he, he did a great job. But I'm going to tell you, now Kyle Shanahan did a heck of a 49ers, job yeah. with the 49ers. Coach, yeah. so, uh, and, and I think uh, uh, Tom, uh, John Lynch, yeah. the general manager, they drafted perfectly sure, yeah. to get the pieces they needed. Uh, so it's going to be uh, it's going to be a heck of a football game. Well, of course, Kansas City again, coach, fell behind seventeen to seven. <laughs> Nobody seems to worry about it with the Mahomes. You know, he was interviewed before the game, and uh, Mahomes was, and they asked him, "You guys," he said, "Look, what we think is everybody does their job, yeah. and if everybody does their job, everything will turn out okay." Well, evidently, <laughs> he's right because that's how, that's did. what happened. They came back to win 35-24, and it wasn't even that close. First Super Bowl again in fifty years uh, for the Kansas City Chiefs since. Super Bowl IV in 1970 down in New Orleans. Meanwhile, uh, San Francisco really dominated Green Bay, 37 to 20. You mentioned, Coach. They're now 15 and three. Four Niners go to their first Super Bowl in seven years. I have to admit, I was 
from a nostalgic standpoint in the 100th anniversary of the NFL season. I was really hoping for a Kansas City, Green Bay, Super Bowl one was those two teams. You know, I, I vividly remember seeing Super Bowl one. I. I was playing football at the University of New Mexico. Wow. Vicki and I were married. Yeah. That was our one-year anniversary. You see, that's how I know how many years I've been married. That's smart. Because this is Super Bowl 54, and Wednesday I will have been married 54 Congratulations. years. Congratulations. I knew I was Thank coming you. up, Coach. Yeah, but, you know, so, but, but what, a, what a great story that would have been wow. to have those oh, two teams yeah. play again. But it wasn't in the book for uh, Green Bay to be able to play at the same level. Yeah. Before we get into our show, we want to also uh, give a shout-out to the Tulsa Oilers. They are uh, playing well right now. They're going to be back home this uh, Friday, Saturday. Kalamazoo at 7.05 uh, on uh, Friday, Saturday. Then on Sunday, they'll have Idaho at 4.05. Tulsa right now, 18, 21, and 3, 40 points. Currently six in the ECHL uh, Mountain Division. But uh, they're playing some good hockey. And, of course, uh, the uh, Oklahoma City Thunder coach, uh, <laughs> i got to be impressed. I mean, I, no it, superstars. Just it's like I players. said for the last three weeks. Yeah. I think uh, uh, Billy Donovan finally has a group that will listen to his coaching and we're seeing the value of a good coach because those guys are doing what he, yeah. they ask him to do. And I, I think, you know, it was just, I always felt like coaching in the pros was one of the most difficult jobs there was because you're managing millionaires. Yeah. I mean, that's tough. Yeah. And, and I don't know that it'll ever change, but uh, I think they've done a good job and you know, they're playing themselves right out of the draft picture. That's right. You know, that's and into the, the playoffs. And, yeah. Into the playoffs. That's true. <laughs> Well, stay with us because we're going to have Emmett Hahn, the co-founder, the genius, the man behind the incredible event, the 34th annual Chili Bowl. Another great success. We also got a good report for the racetrack, an interview with the winner. All that coming up right straight ahead on Oklahoma Sports Scene here at the Brooktown Brewery Restaurant in South Tulsa. That is awesome. I come bearing gifts of the liquid variety. Bricktown Brewery, come and get it. Hey Mo, have you seen the MDX? I'm pretty sure it was in the showroom when I left yesterday. Uh, no, sorry Jen, I haven't seen it. Positive you haven't seen it? Hey, Mo, I went ahead and pulled the MDX back up on the showroom for it. Oh, hey, Jen. Haven't seen it, huh? At Roger State University, we keep things personal. It all starts here. We make sure our graduates get the most out of their education. RSU has campuses in Claremore, Bartlesville, and Pryor, with on-campus housing and a wide variety of programs to suit your needs. It all starts here. Roger State University. So the 34th Chili Bowl is in the record books. Another record-setting race as it was. My gosh, Evan Hahn is here, hoping to keep him awake for a little while here. <laughs> Evan, my gosh, well, you've got to be exhausted. Tell us about the Chili Bowl week 2020. It was a great week of racing, and I, I, after Friday night's main event, I called my wife down in the office. I said, that is probably the best main event we've ever had at Chili wow. Bowl. Yeah. Uh, I've, never, I've been around racing a long time, and I've never seen top four cars go like that for the lead, ever. Wow. I tell you what, and of course, the crowds were great again. Uh, yes. Sold out. Absolutely, and of course, you had the, uh, the show. Uh, outside there where people could go through and, and get right, trinkets Richard, and yeah, stuff. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, the thing is, I mean, I, for, for that week and the week previous, you know, for your other shootout, what, what two great weeks in January when there's not a lot going on in the city? The hotel and restaurant people love it. <laughs> I bet. I bet. That impact is still, what they say, 30 to... The lieutenant governor said it's $33 million a week with Chili Bowl. Is that unbelievable? Excellent. That's wow. fantastic. And, of course, it all culminated with the Saturday championship feature, the A feature, 55 laps, 24 of the fastest cars throughout the week. My man Thomas Walking Stick was there, covered all the action for us. Here's his report from the track. I feel like I've just got a lot of 
a lot of fans in here that have wanted to see me win as bad as I've wanted to win. And, uh, you know, I can feel it when every time I walk in this building, you know, I can see it in the stands whenever I'm in contention. You know, I take the lead and <clears throat> I can, I mean, I'm, I'm under green and I can see the crowd going nuts. And um, it's just, I don't know, you just, you don't ever get to really experience it. You know, I was getting, I was getting signals from the top row rowdies under the yellows. So they're giving me the big lead sign, which was nice to see. But yeah, I mean, it's just, you know, obviously Chris being an Oklahoma guy, you know, he's got a lot of fans also. But I think you know, people have seen the heartbreak I've gone through in this building, and it, it makes me a fan favorite. I told Chris when we were on stage, I said, hey, try and smile, because it sucks. It's hard. It's hard <laughs> to smile up there. But uh, yeah, it's um, just a totally different feeling than I had last year. So um, you know, that was that's good. You know, I you never. Uh, it's hard to pass Chris. You know, he's so good. He makes no mistakes. And, and honestly, he didn't make any mistakes in front of me. I just felt like I had a better car than him and uh, could get the runs on exit that I needed to, you know, carry the momentum on my sliders and um, break his momentum up also. So um, just pretty, pretty unbelievable to uh, finally get it done and been trying for a long time, you know, basically half as I've been alive. So, um, and I'm still young. So um, pretty, pretty crazy, but uh, glad I finally could do it. So the NASCAR superstar Kyle Larson finally did it. That was his uh, ninth A feature, <coughs> his 13th Chili Bowl. He won by 0.801 seconds. Oh. With a three-time defending champion, Christopher Bell, our guy from Norman, Oklahoma, and a guy from Bixby, our 17-year-old Cannon McIntosh, also got on the stand there, too. I love this quote, and I know Emma did, too. Just the guy out of the car, the first thing Kyle Larson said to a worldwide media is, I'm sorry, NASCAR. I'm sorry, Daytona. This is the biggest <coughs> effing race I've ever won. Hope to win Daytona in a few weeks, but this is bad blank. He loved it, huh? What a, what a yeah. statement. I remember uh, John Lawson from California. Billy Bo drove for him years ago, and we had a press <coughs> conference, and John Larson said, it's easier to win the Indy 500 than it is to win the Chili Bowl. <laughs> now tell us about this kid, Blake Hahn. You've got to be proud of him. Ran eighth and got the Hard Charger Award. What's that all about? Well, he, he done a good job. Yeah. He's uh, our grandson, and, and and he's unlike me. I'm cocky and obnoxious and not politically <laughs> correct, but he's polite and well mannered. <laughs> but uh, I, you know, he was running up there pretty good, and uh, there's only a yellow flag, and the car just quit. I mean, just died. Oh, yeah. And then they, when you stop on the racetrack, you have to go to the back. Then he, they pushed him off. It fired back up, and it quit again. Then they fired him off, and uh, he came from the back and run eight. So he had a good run. Huh. What uh, it, you know, What do you think his future is in this? I hope he can find a good car owner and get me <laughs> where I don't spend my money. <laughs> no, I think uh, I think he'll probably go on up to probably World of Outlaw Racing mm -hmm. at, at some point. Yeah. He's just about another year from having. He's real good right now, but another year he'll uh, seat time. He'll he'll be uh, a good shooter. Well, that's great. That's fantastic. And these folks who were out at the Chili Bowl got to watch Kyle Larson race. They got to watch Christopher Bell race. You can watch them in end of February. They'll be at the Daytona 500, right? Yes, they will. Unbelievable. It is. Yeah. In, in fact, it's just uh, they they said on Sirius Radio this morning on the NASCAR station there said it was all 100% Chili Bowl. <laughs> wow, that's fantastic. <laughs> Again, 343 drivers, 40 states, six foreign countries, and a record 77 flips. But, but no drivers hurt, right? <laughs> well, I'm going to tell you what. When you're on a bull ring, running as fast as they're running, there's going to be some crashes. <laughs> I didn't know there's 77. 77, a record. That don't surprise me. <laughs> so when they have a crash, I mean, you're, you're just out, right? I mean, you're, if, if, you're torn, yeah. if your car's Most torn up. Most of the up. time, but... Uh, I've seen a lot of them out there that turns them over and they'll roll them back over. Push Here them we off, go. They yeah. go realign. They you go know. to the back of the pack, right? They go to the yeah. back of the pack, yeah. It's, uh, and we do not throw red flags when somebody gets upside down or would still be racing. Yeah, that's right. So, mm -hmm. uh, unless it's a bad one. But yeah. Uh, yeah. I'll tell you what, 
somebody told me after the first night, they said, Emmett, said, these guys are spinning people out, said, you're going to have to do something about their driving. And I, and I watched them. Them guys are on the ragged edge. They're running what it is. You got a lot of good cars, and them guys are trying to run as hard as Kyle oh, Larson yeah. and Christopher Bell, yeah. and they're just a little bit above themselves. And then if a guy in front of them just bobbles, they've done hit him and spun him mm -hmm. out. And that, that's what's happening. I mean, they're just, uh, it's just unbelievable. Well, they already got the dates, and pretty soon we saw tickets for the 2021, the 35th Chili Bowl. The dates are January 11th through the 16th. Give I have a little time to rest before that, though. But <laughs> Emma, talk about it. I have so many drivers tell me and other people how impressed they were with the way that track was prepared. You even have Hall of Famers doing some of your track work. Tony Stewart this <laughs> he week. He got Tony Stewart out there helping us. But Gravel is the guy that lays the racetrack out uh, and maintains it. In fact, uh, I think Tony got a ticket to... Uh, Tuesday or Wednesday night going <laughs> home to Hard Rock. And it was somebody said, what's he doing at 2.48 in the morning? I said, he just got through working on the track. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely, yeah. But, uh, no, them guys done a fantastic, that's probably the best track night after night that we've yeah. ever had at Chili Bowl. Well, I know we had good friends of ours, Kathy Barkley, our uh, Hall of Famer, Tulsa Bowl School, our, our, our foundation up our president. Foundation president. Yep. Her husband, Mike Barkley, who is the Chief Legal Counsel of St. Francis Health System. She went with Becky and me Saturday night, thank you, with the VIP passes. And they were just, I mean, absolutely blown away. Came back into the pit area to see all those incredible trailers, the setups, the money involved. And then the top prize for the Chili Bowl for the top race was $10,000. Yeah. They're not doing this for the races. It's not for the money. I, it's just Ryan Newman, he hadn't raced open wheel in a long time. Yeah. And they said he is on Sirius Radio, and he just said, you know, he said, that Chili Bowl, it's not a race, it's an event. And he said he had as much fun there as he's had in a long time. Yeah. So what's for the future? I mean, the best thing about it, everybody Tulsa talks about it, is the contract's been extended to what, 2034, 34, right? I think. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. And, I, and there's not much more room to add seats or anything. Is there, I know they're brand new. Uh, Bleacher, really nice, little bleacher, really nice this year. We're maxed out on seats, and it just goes back to uh, kind of whatever the market will bear. Right. Our sponsorship is yeah. going to come up a little bit, and we had a uh, we had a sponsor for the flip count, them '77 flips. Uh, <laughs> Gateway in St. Louis sponsored that, you know. Yeah, so right. we're getting where we're getting, picking up some more sponsors, and that's that's. Well, where you're have going you at. have you made the the Las Vegas line on who's going to win? <laughs> no, but I they I, I don't know. It wouldn't surprise me if Vegas don't have that on the gym. I'm bowl. serious. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, you bet. Well, you're gonna be awful proud uh, of this event, Evan. Also, I feel you need to know what's involved now with clearing all that out of Expo Square because you got a we got a boat show coming here in a couple of days, right? Let me tell you, <laughs> right now, there's probably over a hundred boats in that building already. Oh my yeah. goodness. Yeah. So, We're taping on Monday evening here and you've been I don't know if you sleep at all, but when did you guys start clearing all that out of there? As soon as they drop that checkered flag? We and, have a crew that comes in and starts taking cable, fence and barriers down and we got there at seven o'clock Sunday morning. And they was hauling dirt. We had 15 trucks hauling dirt. <laughs> Finished up at uh, 3 o'clock this afternoon. Got the last load of dirt out. Gee, yeah, well, that's great. Well, we got something for you here, Emmett. You bet, You're too tired to enjoy dinner tonight at Brick Tower. We'll make sure you, you come back come with back your wife. You come back sometime when you're awake. I'll come yeah. back when I'm awake and <laughs> get me a dinner. And I appreciate it, guys. Exactly. It's a great chili bowl. All right. Fantastic. And we'll see you in two weeks. All that's right, right. That's right. All right. And why is that? Because Emmett Hahn is coming in the Tulsa Public Schools. Athletic Hall of Fame as a Webster graduate. Webster, boy. We uh, you'll enjoy this. Great time there. Congrats I will have fun. Hall of Famer Evan Hahn. We'll be right back with a look at Major League Fishing. Stay with us. Food's delicious. I love the avocado fries. I love the energy. <laughs> Local beer. Great food. Truly friendly service. Does it look all right for you? Bricktown Brewery. Come and get it. Each week we talk about the GTR, and we know for a fact that Forrest Cameron and his wife Sharon put out a 
tremendous paper. Well, I brought all six of them today. I'd like for you to see them, the Union Bound Dairy. And here is the Owasso Rambler. And if you live in Bixby, how about the Bixby Breeze or Broken Arrow, the Broken Arrow Express, Jinx, District Gazette, and then of course, the Tulsa Midtown. All of those, the GTR. If you haven't had an opportunity to read one, do it and you'll be proud of it. Winston, tie or bow tie? Mm, good choice. Sammy, they're here. Good morning, welcome to Don. Come on, you guys. What did you think they were here for? Well, it's the Honda Summer Spectacular Sales Event going on now at Don Carlton Honda. Welcome back to Oklahoma Sports Scene. We have Tricia Milford now, who is the Senior PR and Communications Director for Major League Fishing. And what a great thing this is. Wow. This has exploded with my old friend, my old business partner, Jim Wilburn, heading up Major League Fishing. Tell us what it's all about. What is your ultimate goal with Major League Fishing? Absolutely. Thank you for having us on today. Yes. So Major League Fishing was founded in 2011, and it is a new competitive bass tournament circuit focused on growing the sport of competitive bass fishing. And so it started as just a media property. So only television shows, cups, they were filmed in the dark, as we say, on various lakes around the country with 30 anglers, edited for Outdoor Channel specifically, which is one of our ownership groups right. of Major League Fishing. And then we've grown over the past few years. Big events coming up, including the Bass Pro 2020 Tour. Talk about that for us. For sure. The 2020 Bass Pro Tour begins on February 7th in Lake Eufaula, Alabama. Um, Bass Pro Tour was an expansion of the Major League Fishing property when 80 of the best competitive anglers in the world, including household names like Kevin Van Dam, Mike Iconelli, and Oklahoma's own Edwin Evers, along with newcomers Jacob Wheeler or Jordan Lee, joined a tournament circuit, um, Bass Pro Tour. So we have eight events all across the country, including a championship event annually. They're broadcast live from their various locations, from a studio right here in Tulsa, uh, with commentators here in Tulsa talking about the action. Talk about mainstream. I'm looking, I'm looking at the NFL, CBS, Division Football, and all of a sudden, there's Major League Fishing on CBS. It surely is. So part of our goal is to grow the interest in fishing overall. Competitive tournament fishing as well as just fishing, picking up a rod and enjoying it at the lake. And so we have bought um, stations like CBS and Discovery Network where we have a larger audience who've never fished in the last year or more. And wow. so really just trying to grow the sport overall for everyone. Well, in, in, in the growth of the sport, um, have you had any impact with the intercollegiate? fishing or the interscholastic fishing? We have, for sure. Um, in November, we actually acquired FLW, which is, has one of the best college fishing networks. Um, so we're excited to be a part of that group. And then Major League Fishing tested our format. It's a little different than the way other competitive bass tournaments are run. Instead of a five fish tournament with a weigh-in like other competitive tournaments, ours is three periods like hockey <laughs> meets a bracketing system like basketball over an eight hour day. And so guys go out on the water, they have a, an official right there in the boat every fish they catch over the variable minimum weight is counted they could be catching 80 fish a day they could be catching 50 fish a day scores of the total day are what count towards who's eliminated and who stays in the competition so it's very exciting and our college folks we've tested it with several college small tournaments that we've run in various markets we've been in in 2019 and the response has been overwhelming we're excited we think that as people get exposed to this format of competitive bass fishing that's a little bit high pace there's stamina involved. Um, if you watch our shows on Discovery or Outdoor Channel, you'll see the guys throwing their rods in exhaustion <laughs> as a period ends, yeah. much like, you know, when the, the benches, you know, everyone gets to head back right, to the bench right. for a little bit of water in football or basketball. So Tell, tell us about the, the stage events. I know we got a stage four event scheduled later on for Grove here in Oklahoma, right? We do. So we're traveling this eight circuit, uh, eight tournament field across the country, and we'll be back here in Oklahoma in April. That is April 24th through 29th. So um, coming out to Grove, our launch, you can see the guys going in th for the water, coming out in the takeout. We'll have some live action there. But it's not like other traditional for, uh, tournaments where you have a big festival, if you will. This is much more about our television products. So mm. people across Oklahoma can just tune in live on their app. We have Major League oh, Fishing yeah. app. They can watch us live or My Outdoor Television on their streaming device or just on MajorLeagueFishing.com. Tune in and watch all the action. Find out all the secrets of their favorite yeah. Grand Lake here in Oklahoma. Where is your new studio in Tulsa? 
It's in South Tulsa in just around the 101st uh, Regent High School, so we're excited to be a part oh, of that I organization. Great for the economy oh, here in Tulsa. Exactly, we are. Yeah. So we'll have 54 hours of broadcast time, nine times nine stages uh, coming live oh, from goodness. Tulsa, yeah. in addition to some uh, support and sales products that we'll be putting out as well. So a very active studio here in Tulsa. And you're really making stars of these anglers, aren't you? We certainly are. We have 80 of the best anglers in the world as a part of the Bass Pro Tour. And with our acquisition of FLW, we actually have created a, an opportunity for young anglers to go all the way up to the top field. The Bass Pro Tour is an angler-centric league, so the anglers have a board. They vote on things that they'd like to see in the competition. One of the first things they voted on is the Bass Pro Tour has no entry fee. And so that is really the culmination. What other professional sport has an entry yeah, yeah, fee? Right. If NFL, no one is doing that. So that's really about us putting Major League Fish on the par with other pro sports. So do you have then uh, corporate partners that uh take care of that? We do, obviously. So again, uh, Jim Wilburn started this as a media yeah. property, and so advertising is our bread and butter right now, but now we're, as we've grown the Bass Pro Tour, sponsorship is growing as well, and we're excited. We've had uh, Venmo presented our Redcrest event, and also our CBS airing that aired just this last Saturday, mm. um, Inside Redcrest, presented by Venmo. So we're getting endemic and non-endemic sponsors. Bass Pro Shops is our title sponsor for the Bass Pro Tour. Mm. So it's really about getting everyone involved in, in supporting fishing across the board. And obviously for any anglers, no matter what level you are, incredible tips and insight and innovation from these anglers, both on the shows and on your website is really great too. Absolutely. These anglers are very, very accessible. They want to share their sport and their craft and talk about it. And also now with our expansion into the FLW circuit, we are partnering with ba uh, Phoenix Bass Pro League, which is anglers of every level. So the Okie Division opens here um, in March 17th on Grand Lake. So any wow. any of our local anglers that $300 per boater, $150 per co-angler can get in involved in the action. And mm -hmm. our Major League Fishing uh, guys will be making a throughout the year. We've got one of the best of the best is going to join us in our very next segment here. Edwin Evers, tell us about him, what he's meant to the program. Edwin Evers has been with Major League Fishing since it started in 2011. He's been a critical component, and last year he won it all. He was not only points champion angler of the year for the 2019 Bass Pro Tour, but he also um, has done amazing things with Redcrest, taking home the title there as well. So Edwin has been a wonderful spokesperson for the sport for his many years in the, in the industry, and now with Major League Fishing, he's just been a you know, great partner, and we're excited to see his success. And if you start ragging on your, your, your husband or your son about going out and wasting their time fishing. By the way, his lifetime earnings are over $3.6 million. Pretty good, isn't it, Coach? That's not bad for not a pastime. Not bad, huh? <laughs> right. okay. We have something for you, Church, for taking the time to join us here. Thank Come back you. to Bricktown anytime on us. Thank you yeah. so much. You I appreciate bet. it. Absolutely glad to be here. Tell Jim Wilbur what he missed. I will, for it's sure. Better, I'll bring buddy. him for a burger. Yeah. Jim had the flu, so I had to miss this time. We'll get back on the show real soon, though. Evelyn Evers is coming up straight ahead. As we talk more fishing here on Oklahoma Sports Scene from a raucous Rick Town Brewery restaurant here in Tulsa. Stay with us. Hey, Mo, have you seen the MDX? I'm pretty sure it was in the showroom when I left yesterday. Uh, no, sorry, Jen. I haven't seen it. Are you positive you haven't seen it? Hey, Mo, I went ahead and pulled the MDX back up on the showroom for it. Oh, hey, Jen. Haven't seen it, huh? I bring Tulsa's voice to Oklahoma City and Washington. I build relationships with elected officials and community stakeholders to develop policies that grow the Tulsa region. A lot of my time at Rider State University, the personal relationships I developed with professors really helped develop a skill set that would help me serve the Tulsa region that I care about. It all started for me at Rider State University. Continuing our segment with Major League Fishing, we've got one of the best of the best with us here from Kalala, Oklahoma. Our own Edwin Evans has been on the show with us before. Edwin, congratulations. 
Thank you so much. Back. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank First on that Bass Pro title again last year. Wrap up 2019 for us. The oh. season was for you. Just a whirlwind season, you know, to describe it. It's, you know, the, the inaugural launch of the Bass Pro Tour, 80 of the best anglers, bar none. And we just, we went and we battled it out all year all across the country. And it's just an amazing season. It, it went by in a blink of an eye. We were just so busy going from lake to lake, you know, trying to catch every bass that was in that <laughs> lake. And uh, it was a lot of fun, you know. I just, it's one that for me personally, I'll never forget because it's the best season I've ever had, you know, as in, in my professional career of, of bass fishing. Um, it just, it was a memorable, memorable season for uh, me. How, how many events, how many states you talk about, how many miles you put on? <laughs> Probably put 30 to 35,000 miles on the truck. <laughs> oh, nice. uh, and I, that's leaving it, you know, on the East Coast and flying home between events, yeah. not trying to drive yeah. it back and forth. But, uh, you know, eight different events, uh, nine including the, the championship. Um, you know, the championship is there on the Mississippi River, but uh, just a, a really neat season. We went, you know, from Florida to Alabama to all the way to Wisconsin and, and, and a lot of states in between. Any one week, all 80 in, in each event, or are there fewer in, in, events across the nation? Or? No, in, in, in the Bass Pro Tour, all 80 compete. All 80 every yeah, week. Yes, sir. Yeah. Is, this, is this the one where it's a blind lake? You don't know where you're fishing? No, that's the cups. So cups, when, okay, when we cups. go to the cups, it's completely blind. They, we get in the pickup truck of one of the boat officials, and they drive us to the lake in the dark. You don't know any. You don't know where you're going. Wow. You have no idea. Yeah. And it's really challenging in the cups because a lot of the events are up north, and you don't know if the lake has smallmouth or largemouth because there's lakes oh, up there yeah. that just have smallmouth. Yeah. There's lakes that just have largemouth. So to pack the boat full of the equipment is really a big challenge, especially up north. Uh, you know, if you have an event here in Oklahoma, we got smallmouth here, but generally you, you know you can compete with, with largemouth. But uh, uh, the Bass Pro Tour, we all know the lakes, but we just can't get any outside information. We have very strict rules to, to keep, you know, let's say you're the best, the best guide on, on Grand Lake over there. Uh, I can't come to you and say, hey man, here's yeah. 200 bucks, take me out there, there and go, show yeah. me where to go, or you know, just give me some information. We, we took all that out of it. To, wow. so, it's the best anglers that can do it on their own knowledge. Boy, that's unbelievable. Uh, <laughs> so uh, how does this next year look? You know, 2019 was brought together in a very short order. You know, 88 days from the time everybody signed uh -huh. up to, yeah. to the first lake. So they didn't have any time to, to get the permits. You have to have permits to go to these lakes, you know, to use the boat ramps. The 2020 schedule is amazing. I mean, it's big fish lake after big fish lake after big fish lake. It's 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 going to be unreal. I can't wait. You know, we're starting off at Eufaula, Alabama. Uh, it's a it's a it's a monster lake down there on the Chattahoochee River. It's got mm. monster bass in it. We go from there to Okeechobee down in South Florida, and it just gets better from there. Every lake we go to throughout the whole season is just a big fish factory, and it's going to be a lot of fun. So it'll be the same number of events. Uh, yes, sir. This next week. Yep. Yes. What kind of money are we talking about? Purse money. Uh, $100,000 first place, $42,000 second, and it just goes down the line. And you got to. Like every, every one of the events. Every one of those events. Wow. So you got to realize also, we're not paying entry fees. You know, right. in my previous 20 years of my profession, sure. I was paying a $5,000 per event entry fee. Oh my you know, now wow. in Major League Fishing. So it's really neat for those young kids, those college yeah. kids, high school kids. They now have a chance to move up to this. Major League Fishing Bass Pro Tour and not have to have a mom and her dad or a grandpa or a pocket of money. Once they right. get there, they can actually make it because they don't have to pay entry fees and come up with $55,000 in entry fees. Is yeah. the college uh, fishing uh, teams having an impact on your numbers? Oh, it, college fishing is exploding. It, it's, it's just amazing, you know, that and high school. You know, I, I've done some of the high school tournaments where I was a boat captain and there'll be 250 to 300 teams, two-man mm -hmm. teams. And you'll see girls, you'll see young kids. You know, it's really neat for the high schools, uh, just because you don't have to be a football player or a basketball player, right. and you can get a scholarship. You know, my boss at Tracker Marine is the college coach for Drury University there in Springfield. Oh yeah, yeah. and he goes to these high school events and he recruits kids just like we recruit football wow. players and yep. basketball players sure. to be on his college fishing team and gives them a full ride. It's crazy. Talala, Oklahoma's own uh, Evan Evers, one of the all-time great bass fishermen. Just a few numbers I got to put on you here. 13 major wins in his career, four top tens, 117 top 20s, and just uh, as I was kidding, Trisha, don't don't rag on your husband or kid who wants to go out fishing. Last time we were about 3.6 million dollars. Probably not net, but it's a lot of <laughs> lot of work, a lot of there, and I'm 
sharing sure, an awful part of that. How about Oklahoma? How does Oklahoma stack up with lakes and fish? Oh, we're so blessed here in Oklahoma because our lakes, we have so much water here, big bodies of water that you just don't have anywhere else in the country. Mm. And, and Oklahoma is one of the top lakes without a doubt, top destination, you know, for people to come to Oklahoma to fish because it's just such a diverse fishery on top of that, you know, with a, a tin killer or a broken boat thrown in there that's a deep, clear, yeah. colder water lake to, you know, a Eufaula or a Texoma or a Grand that, that has it all. It's a, it's a really neat, diverse state and really a great state for kids that want to learn how to fish because you have so many different ways to fish here in Oklahoma. How many events in Oklahoma? This year we have one on Grand. Oh, yeah, that'd be nice. Yeah. Oh, I can't wait. You know, Grand's a great lake, and uh, I just want to invite everybody to come out. That's a home home lake advantage. Isn't yeah. It? <laughs> well, I don't know. These guys are good, so we'll see. But uh, we just, you know, hope everybody comes out and uh, comes and meets all their favorite pros out there. And all the fishing fans can catch you all the time on all the time on Outdoor Channel. Tell us about the TV and when we see you there. Uh, you know, all the Bass Pro Tour events, they're all going to start live on the internet, MajorLeagueFishing.com, starting in February. You can watch us all day long fishing. Wow. Uh, the Cups all just started airing here in January on Saturday at 1 o'clock Central Time from the previous, uh, you know, just all the Cups that we qualified for last year. The, oh, the yeah. first one's airing right now. It's on Bull Shoals, and uh, it was a great, great event there on Bull Shoals. And you'll see Edwin Evers on every one of those shows. <laughs> I don't know about that, fishermen. but I'm going to try to be. we got something for you. <laughs> Come back to Bricktown when you're in town. Right, you're not going to be in man. town much, it doesn't sound it's like. It's one of our favorite places. Yeah, good fish and chips are here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah well, thank you, buddy. Good luck. Hey, guys. To you. Thanks a lot good for having me on. All right. Yes, sir. Evan Eber is our champion bass fisherman of Oklahoma. When we come back, give Kevin Sam the warm season, talk some baseball. Ryan Fulmer, head baseball coach at Old Roberts University, will be here to look ahead of the Golden Eagle season, talk about their big diamond dinner event coming up at the end of the month. Hey, Mo, have you seen the MDX? I'm pretty sure it was in the showroom when I left yesterday. Uh, no, sorry, Jen. I haven't seen it. Are you positive you haven't seen it? Hey, Mo, I went ahead and pulled the MDX back up on the showroom for it. Oh, hey, Jen. Haven't seen it, huh? Y'all has everything tasting. That is awesome. I come bearing gifts of the liquid variety. Bricktown Brewery. Come and get it. Robertson Tire has been your local tire expert since 1962. Now at RobertsonTire.com, it's easier than ever to get a customized quote. And with our price match guarantee, you can be sure that you're getting the best price. For more information, visit RobertsonTire.com. Well, I mean, I feel like baseball weather out there, but it's time to start thinking baseball. And Ryan Fulmer is here with Old Roberts University, their head baseball coach. Had a great job with their championship program out there. We're talking about a special event. It's always gets the season kicked off, the big diamond dinner. Ryan, give us a particular story. Yeah, you know, this year is, uh, it's, been, it's been one of those annual things we've done for a long period of time. Uh, recently, we moved out to the Glenpool Convention Center. January 31st, uh, the silent auction begins around 6 o'clock. Uh, our speaker this year is one of our own, Jeremy Hefner. You're all right, yeah. Who recently was hired with the, uh, with the New York Mets. Pitching, so pitching coach for the Mets? Pitching, new pitching coach Great. for the New York yeah. Mets. So we're excited to bring Jeremy back and help us raise a little bit of money in the meantime. Also bringing back one of our favorites, a three-time all-conference starter over here. Joe Tomino's coming back, right? Yeah. You know, uh, we, we've been fortunate to have a lot of people come back from the Tulsa community. We've talked before. The Tulsa community yeah. is such a, a great baseball community. And... Uh, as you said, it gives us a chance to kind of kick off our year, but gather a lot of those good baseball folks around the Tulsa area and really have a special night. It's going to be uh, a difficult time the next week or so to get outside <laughs> and play baseball. Isn't it? it is. It is. Especially here in the next couple of days, it looks like the weather's going to turn on us a little bit. And we've been fortunate, too, over the, over the holiday break. It's, you know, right. it's been mild. Correct. It's been very nice. All of a sudden, it gets this time of year, and you know the cold's coming. So, um, you know, it's one of those things. It's... It's part of this time of the year and you part open of college up, uh, baseball. You and travel? You know what? We open up at home. We open up at home uh, the first weekend we have, February yeah. 14th weekend, we open with Merrimack at home. Uh, the following weekend, we go to Waco, Texas uh, to play Baylor for a three-game series. We're back at home the following weekend against Incarnate Word. 
Um, and then we go back on the road to Dallas Baptist right before we start conference play. And I, you guys are spoiled, Mr. Ola Roberts. He's been a big part of that. It's unbelievable. They, they, they won 18 consecutive conference titles. It totally dominated. And last year, the brand new club, very young team and stuff. Yeah. Kind of took a little step back, but ready to bounce back this year, I'm sure, Ryan. Yeah, we did. We had a young team, and, and, and it didn't end the way we wanted it to end. Came up a little bit short, so... You know, we've done everything in our power this offseason to make sure we have an opportunity to go out there and, and compete for another championship. And uh, we're young again. We're, we're fairly new again. Um, but we feel good about the guys that, that we brought in to plug in some holes. So we're excited to get going. This is a fun time of year. The anticipation of the season is, is right around the corner. I think we're, uh, you know, we're four or five weeks away from opening day. So uh, it's almost here. Wow. Who's going to be the... Uh other than Oral Roberts, the team to beat in your league? <laughs> i tell you what, there's a couple really good teams. I think you look at uh, South Dakota State as an outstanding pitching staff. They're very deep. Uh, they have some quality arms. And you look at North Dakota State and the guys that they return on the mound as well. I think those two teams return a lot of experience on the mound. And uh, as you guys know, our game a lot of times comes down to pitching. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. those, those are two clubs in our league that have really good pitching. I got a great South Dakota State story. Okay, when I was the head baseball coach at Cameron University, they called and wanted to come down and play. And they were headed to Texas. And I said, sure. I talked to the coach and said, we've been outside two days. We threw play <laughs> catch in the parking lot, and that's it. Yeah. So I'm yeah. thinking, we are going to play this game. I'm going to get me two wins here. <laughs> they were in AI. We were in AI. They come down. We get the dead gumbus ice storm late in March. I'm unbelievable. I mean, we work that field, work that field. We burn tires. We do the whole thing. <laughs> Diesel, you name it. Yeah. We get it ready. Their first hitter hits a gap to the right center. Slides head first into first and third base for a triple, and he's black from here down to here with, that, <laughs> with the tires. <laughs> Three weeks later, the coach called me and said, Coach, uh, what'd you put on your field there? He said, well, We can't get that out of the universe. <laughs> All that rubber had been in there, and we swept the doubleheader, and they yeah, went on to Texas. Yeah. But. In fact, South Dakota State will, will know pretty quickly they're your summer league opener. I hear that opening series, March yeah. 13th to 15th in the summer league. Yeah, we're going to find out in a hurry. Again, our, our, our preseason schedule is challenging. Um, hopefully it kind of prepares us for that first weekend, but we're going to be tested right out of the shoot. That's a really good team that comes down again with a lot of good yeah. quality arms. So uh, we're going to get tested early. You got uh, returning uh, starting lineup pretty good? Yeah, you know, for the most part, we lose a, a big guy in the middle. Spencer Henson was a guy that kind of yeah, did a little yeah. bit of everything yes, for us. That's right. Won back to back triple crowns what in our league. What a great kid, too. Yeah. Um, you know, so again, I, I don't know that we have another one of those guys to plug in, but we feel like we have some depth to our lineup. I think the bottom part of our lineup is much improved. So uh, we like the guys we return, and we, you know, we have some guys coming in that, that I think are going to be. Uh, a big part of our success. Well, we'd be forward. remiss if we didn't ask the question. Do you steal signs? <laughs> <laughs> right. I tell oh, you, that wow. is what that's, a mess, huh? it's a mess in, in, in Major League late. Baseball right now. And I think you're going to see some of the trickle-down effect come into college baseball at some point, too. Right. I think people are naive if they don't think it happens at oh. every level of baseball um, in some respects. So uh, I think before it's all said and done, there's a lot more names that are going to come out over the next couple yeah. weeks. And uh, hopefully they can get it cleaned up. Yep. You know, Ryan, I'm so impressed with the tradition and history of RU baseball. It truly is, to me, the number one sport at Oral Roberts University. Guys have a great tradition. Where's your recruiting base? Do you start in Oklahoma and fan out, or where do you find most of these guys? Yeah, I think first and foremost, you, you, you try to recruit your area. Um, we made a concert. baseball talent here. Oh, there's great yeah. talent in, in the Tulsa area. So we've centered our, uh, our recruiting base here in Tulsa. I think from there, you know, we have connections all over the country. We've had a lot of success in California, especially with California junior colleges. Right. So we continue to go back there. Uh, we do a good job in, in, in Texas, especially the northern part of Texas. So I think if you look at our team, I think you're going to see a lot of Oklahoma kids. Mm. I think right now we have 17 or 18 Oklahoma kids. Yeah, We're very good. proud of that That's fact. Good. Most of them from this Tulsa area. I think you look at California and, and north Texas as well. Got a great Valentine's Day for you guys. Bring your sweetie out to February 14th. Oh, are you baseball season opener? How do you beat that? The that's right. Day, that's huh? right. Why not? But before that, give us again the details on the Diamond Dinner coming yeah. up at the end of the month here. January 31st, uh, Glenpool Convention Center. Jeremy Heffer, the, the new pitching coach with the New York Mets, headlines it. Um, Six o'clock, the silent auction starts. 
Fantastic. Right. Got something for you here, Coach. We're Come taking back the to time break here. Breakdown with us sometime. Yeah. Well, I appreciate it. Thank yeah. you. You bet. Good luck to you. Go to England. Thanks, guys. Right. Appreciate right. it. You bet. Ryan Fulmer, all your head baseball coach. We're going to come back with Mick Wilson. Talk some basketball. The BOK Classic coming up. Food's delicious. I love the avocado fries. I love the energy. <laughs> Local beer. Great food. Truly friendly service. You look all right for you? Bricktown Brewery. Come and get it. At Robertson Tire, we'll match any deal you find on tires, but customer service remains at the core of our business. That's why we've been voted the very best in all three major area publications. Thank you for choosing Robertson Tire for all your auto care needs. Each week we talk about the GTR, and we know for a fact that Forrest Cameron and his wife Sharon put out a tremendous paper. Well, I brought all six of them today. I'd like for you to see them. The Union Boundary, and here is the Owasso Rambler. And if you live in Bixby, how about the Bixby Breeze or Broken Arrow, the Broken Arrow Express, Jinx, District, Gazette, and then, of course, the Tulsa Midtown. All of those, the GTR. If you haven't had an opportunity to read one, do it, and you'll be proud of it. Welcome back to Oklahoma Sports Scene. Now we have the Deputy Director of Athletics for the Tulsa Public Schools, Mick Wilson. He's going to tell us about the BOK Showcase. Well, it's, we're looking forward to another great year of basketball, Gil. Uh, you know, I was thinking back. It's hard to believe it's been 2012 since we... Uh, sat in a room and brainstormed this with Jeff exactly. Nickler and Mike Owens and Evan Fallett and the guys from SMG and the BOK Center and uh, you know to see it come this far uh, it's, it's just it's really uh, really nice to know that we're on the ground floor of, of developing that uh, showcase so it's, and you know it's one refreshing. of the things Nick we were fortunate to work with some really good people because Jeff Nickler you know has moved right on up Michael Owens now is the assistant general manager at the peak and, uh, but we've really had some good people, but we've had better basketball teams. We've had really good basketball, and it's nice that they've really, uh, you know, they really put their trust into us and kind of let us take it and run with it. And uh, this new group of folks that we're now working with, and Brenna and some of her crew, Evan obviously still there, but mm -hmm. uh, they've really uh, embraced us and let us kind of put our own, our own uh, flavor to that and our own touch on it. So it's been really nice, but uh, it's been another great lineup this year. and. Uh, you know, we're hoping uh, that uh, we've kind of got that the kinks worked out. It's always the date's always kind of been a moving target, Chris. That right. So, that that we uh, really have to kind of work around hockey, and then one year we've been sure. bumped for a concert. So there's been some things to work through, but I think we're in pretty good shape now. This one's coming up Saturday, February the first. It's all day basketball, all high school, 16 teams, eight boys, eight girls. Tell us about your lineup. Well, the lineup is uh, really good again, and it's got a, a real strong flavor of some of our best basketball in Tulsa Public Schools, as well as some good basketball in the Frontier Valley Conference and then some of the other uh, smaller school conferences in the city. So uh, looking at Metro Christian and Regent Prep will play a, a boys-girls doubleheader first thing in the morning. They get the breakfast club game that we call it. <laughs> so uh, everyone always uh, says, don't put me in that 9 o'clock game, but they got the 9 o'clock slot, and that's where they're going to be. And then followed by Cash Hall and Edison girls game uh, ought to be real interesting. That's at noon. That is at noon at 1:30. We've got a great rivalry that uh, Gil and I have talked about moving this game for a long time to a different venue because some there's been some years where that game sold out and we have to turn people away. Not but, enough room. Uh, the Central McLean game Central? Is, is huge. Wow. I mean that's huge. Yeah. And and, I, and one great thing memory for us uh, is uh, what was it 14. When they played each other in the state championship. Oh my God! You know, they had, yeah. I told Dr. Ballard was their superintendent then, and we're driving up to that. So, you know, the great thing about this, we're going to get a gold and a silver ball out of this game. <laughs> that's right. And we did, and yeah. we did. That's but that's been that's such a great rivalry game that people that haven't ever experienced that, we really invite those folks out to come out and see one well of a ball game between Central and McLean. That that rivalry is really unmatched in the city. Uh, probably right there with that would be. A, equivalent to what a lot of people see when they see Booker T Memorial play back in the old days. So, And then followed by that game, you'll have Bishop Kelly and, and Will Rogers girls. Three o'clock. Uh, Will Rogers girls currently ranked number two in, in yeah, the 5A so in the state. Then uh, we'll follow that up with uh, mm -hmm. Tulsa Memorial playing Webster. And obviously the Memorial, they're a great tradition, but a lot of people don't realize that Webster's got a marquee player that's a junior that's probably going to be one of the best in the state next year. Uh, a little guard named Anthony Pritchard that's about 6'2", very athletic and has a chance to be really, really good. Yeah. And the and evening session, 
really some headliners there. We do. We've got Bartlesville and Booker T, boys and girls, uh, both games, and we anticipate uh, obviously a, a great crowd. And uh, you know Bryce Thompson and uh, and Trey Phipps sell a lot of tickets. Yeah. So uh, we invite everyone out to get out and watch those. And of course our, our Booker T girls right now are undefeated and number one in six A. So uh, we we feel like we've got a strong lineup. We've got some marquee players that people want to see. So it's just another great day of basketball to come out. Buy you lots of, bring you a lot of snack money, and sit down and watch <laughs> watch a lot of basketball. Well, it's a tremendous venue, and I you know the the it's a, it's a lifetime experience for these kids. Oh, that's easy. to be able to play in an yeah. NBA style uh, in, uh, facility, and uh, you know uh, with the level of the competition that we have, uh, and one of the things that people don't realize is that these games are taking home games away from these people. Right, so, right, sure. So be able to play there, the uh, BOK folks give us a guarantee. For the home team, which it gets, and that get that's really good from the standpoint that if the girls are playing, then the boys are still playing at home for right, that game, yeah. so they get that plus the guarantee. Nice. So yeah. they've been really good, I think, to take care of those teams to come in to uh, be okay. How about ticket information, Nick? Ticket information, go to the BOK uh, Center website. Those tickets uh, are already on sale now. Um, I think they're going to have a quick turnaround because I see that the WWE is in town the night before. So, uh, you know, there's been times when we get ready to play, and those yeah. guys are still putting the, the Tulsa, you know, the city of Tulsa has a floor. They're right. putting the basketball floor down on top of the ice because you obviously we have to work around the Oilers as well, Chris. So uh, it's a quick turnaround, but the tickets are on sale now. They can go to the website and get those. And uh, if anybody else needs inf inf any uh, other type of information, they're always welcome to call our athletic office. And uh, we'll help along with that information as February well. February 1st, it's day long basketball, 8 30 tip in the morning until the final tip at 7 30 that night. Again, uh, 16 teams, eight of the best boys and girls basketball teams in the area. For you guys, for you, Lee Mitchell, I want to again shout out to you and uh, Gil. <laughs> what a great job of that tournament of champions. It's just, a, it was an unbelievable year. I tell you, when, uh, when a school leaves there after the way they played, like Dell City, yeah. and you beat Memorial in the semifinals, and you beat Booker T. Washington in the championship, you can literally say you're the best yeah. team in the state. And Lenny Hatchett was first class all the way. That's the coach at right, Dell yeah, City. Yeah. He called and thanked us and just said, what a great tournament. And uh, that just goes to not only our department, but the, the basketball fans in Tulsa County that support us and helped us make us such a great event. And how about Tony Duke, Winters, huh? Tony Winters and his people, too. Yeah, how about Duke? Duke, yes, I think so happy. <laughs> I, a quick story. Class B, right? Duke, yeah, Class B. Right. They win the last two games. They lose the first night to right. Booker T. Yeah. They win Six the eight. last two games. Their fans are standing the last five minutes of their game, and they're so <laughs> ecstatic that they take up a collection and say, "You guys are staying another night at the Double Tree. That's great. Come huh? back and watch the yeah. finals and everything." So it, it was it was a neat great. thing. All right, Mick, got something for you, my friend. Okay. Come to Thank Ricky you. on us. Yeah, exactly. All right. Thank you. Appreciate you guys again. having me okay. today. Absolutely. Again, want to make, make sure there it's the fifth BOK High School Hoop Showcase, February the 1st. Morning, the night basketball. You'll enjoy it. Go and I come right back with our parting shots. Wow. The service is amazing. The food's delicious. I love the avocado fries. I love the energy. <laughs> Local beer. Great food, truly friendly service. You look all right for you. Bricktown Brewery, come and get it. Winston, Thai or Bow Thai? Mmm, good choice. Sammy, they're here. Good morning, welcome to Don. Come on, you guys. What did you think they were here for? Well? It's the Honda Summer Spectacular Sales Event going on now at Don Carlton Honda. At Rogers State University, we keep things personal. It all starts here. We make sure our graduates get the most out of their education. RSU has campuses in Claremore, Bartlesville, and Pryor, with on-campus housing and a wide variety of programs to suit your needs. It all starts here. Roger State University. We're going to wrap things up at Bricktown Brewery, then we're going to join the party here going on behind us Well, I'm us telling here. you, let's Having go. Having a great time. Let's start with Party Shot Zone. Gil Cloud leads us off. I want to invite everyone to come to the 8th Annual Tulsa Public Schools Athletics Hall of Fame. It will be on January the 30th. 
5.30 with the reception, 6.30 with the banquet. Chris Lincoln is our uh, <laughs> MC for that. We have an outstanding group of 13 inductees this year, four legends that really, really you need to hear the stories about and things that they do. We have everybody from Emmett Hahn, the great racetrack man, to Emmett McHenry, the guy who wrote the first code for the dot com. Uh, it is amazing what has turned out in Tulsa Public Schools over the years that we've had school, over a hundred years. So call our office at 918-746-6453, talk to Lisa, make your reservation. It'll be well worth the evening just to hear those stories. Well, the football season is finally coming to an end. Well, the college football season of 2019 and the 40 bowl games of 2020 are now complete. NFL has one game left. Of course, that is Super Bowl 54 coming up on the first Sunday in February. You know that game, of course, the Kansas City Chiefs against the San Francisco 49ers. So now, finally, we can turn our attention to the much-ignored college basketball season. That's right, they've been playing basketball since the start of November. But we haven't paid much attention to it, unfortunately. We're missing a lot of great basketball. In fact, it's a record season. It's an unbelievable season in terms of parity. Think about this. They were telling us that in this last week, we've had in the AP Top 5, six teams have had losses. Hasn't happened in 26 seasons of college basketball. There's a new number one starting this week, Baylor University. They were number one once before. We've had like a half a dozen number one different ranked teams. And our big five teams in our college basketball in this area, we talked about the University of Tulsa, or Roberts University, the University of Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, and Arkansas, all having some really pretty good seasons. Young Cowboy team struggling a bit, but uh, other ones are really playing well right now. So get out and support our college basketball teams in the area here and get ready because the latest Big 12 basketball, Baylor Bears number one, Kansas number three, coming down for an outstanding madness in March. And of course, the championship game coming up in April. That will be played in Atlanta at the Mercedes uh, Big Stadium down there. So college basketball, finally time to pay attention. All right, Gil, got some big events to talk about. The Field of Dreams coming up. Uh, next Monday, the 27th, out of Claremore at the uh, baseball banquet that uh, Wayne McCombs does a great job of. 15th Field of Dreams, and Rick Mundy is a special uh, featured guest out there. Rick Mundy, uh, what a great story Rick Mundy is. And, uh, you know, it seems like we're uh, we're talking about starting basketball. Yeah. But now we've had Ryan Fulmer on, <laughs> That's right. you know, and now we've got the Field of Dreams, and uh, Oral Roberts has their banquet uh, next week. So I tell you, it's, it's about time to get ready to play some baseball if we can get through basketball. Of course, it goes to April. That's right. So. January 27th, again, that's the Field of Dreams on Monday night at Claremore. Then, our Gil mentioned, coming up on January the 30th, it's our 8th annual Tulsa uh, Public Schools Athletics Hall of Fame. You want to be part of that at the Warren Doubletree Hotel starting at 5.30. And the ORU Baseball Diamond Dinner. Coach Fulmer uh, talked about that with us uh, on the show here, January 31st, that's out at the Glenpool Convention Center. And then Mick Wilson was here to talk about the BOK uh, Hoop Classics. That's coming up February 1st. We've got a lot of things going on right now, so if you want to eat and go to banquets and watch basketball, yeah, you can get on the <laughs> schedule with us because we certainly want you to be there. And join us next week. We'll be talking more about the Super Bowl, of course. The big old Jerry Ostrowski is going to be here to give us some of his wisdom. Thanks for joining us at Bricktown Brewery, Oklahoma Sports Scene. So long, everyone.